Hi, cartographers. Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography at Calvin University here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at my top five tips and tricks in ArcGIS Pro. And as always, I'd love to hear from you, so please share your tips and tricks in the comments below. So let's get started now. Okay, here we are in ArcGIS Pro, this awesome software, but it is a little overwhelming visually as we can see behind me. So let's change that. My tip here is that I love to work in the dark theme instead of the light theme. So to change to dark theme, you simply click on project if you're here or at the start in settings and we go to the options and right here under the general we can choose application theme and change it from light to dark we'll need to restart arcgis pro and then i'll open it in just a second oh yeah now we're working in the dark theme and my eyes are just fine. So perhaps you'll want to change over to the dark theme for your workflows in GIS. Okay, so one of the coolest things that ArcGIS Pro offers is the ability to link views. So here's a project that I've opened up. This is the Netherlands in 1588. So a historical map. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to zoom in and zoom out of this map, but at the same time see a contemporary geography of the landscape to compare and contrast one map view with another map view. Well, linking views within ArcGIS Pro makes this possible, and it's awesome. So let me show you how it works. First, you can see here I have a map and a layout view. So let's go to the map view here. And it's just a, a, of this particular you know, landscape. So let's go ahead and, and move over to this part of the map. And now I will go ahead and add another map. And we'll just insert a new map. And in this case, I'm just going to make it uh, with perhaps a hybrid imagery. So let's go back to map and change the base map to imagery hybrid. Okay, now let's go ahead and view uh, both of these together at the same time. So I'm going to grab this map one and I'm going to drag it down here to dock it in this location. All right, so now you can see the geographies are not the same. I'm going to go back to this primary first map view. And now what I will choose is view and I will choose link view drop down and I'll choose to center and scale. And what will happen then is the other map views here, map view one, will actually come into this geography. So I click it and sure enough, now it's there. And whenever I interact with this one map view, the other one, because it's linked, responds. It's awesome. Okay, so here's the situation you're always connecting to different folders on different drives, but you really just have one folder where all your GIS data is at. So how do you connect to that folder one time so that it always persists across every single project, all the new ones that you create in ArcGIS Pro? It's actually pretty easy and it's an awesome tip. All right. So what you do is first you go over in ArcGIS Pro to the Insert tab. And let's go ahead and choose Favorites. Here, I'm going to add a folder and we'll do this one time so that the folder always appears in every project we create. I'll click Add Folder. I'll navigate to my GIS Data folder, which I'm always using on my workspace. I'll click OK. And now it's added to my Favorites here in Catalog. I can click on favorites and there it is. Now if I right click on GIS data folder here and I choose to add to new projects, 
by selecting this now this folder will always appear on every project and it will always be connected to every project that I create awesome okay so in your cartography you desire to have complete design discretion and you should so one of the things that's most challenging is how to deal with the service layer credits from the base maps in ArcGIS Pro. Well, they're easy to deal with because what we want to do is we want to put those in the fine print, not right there on our map. And so how can we move these around? Well, we can do that with dynamic text. So here I have a map and we have our credits down here on our, our base map. If we go to insert and choose dynamic text, and here if we scroll down to the layout and service layer credits. Now if I just select those service layer credits, now I can have the ability to move them around. I can change their size. I can move them off to put them in publication maybe on the back so that they're not on the map when I print it. And so that is how you deal with some of those service layer credits. Many of us are working with ArcGIS Online. And when we work in that environment, we basically are publishing our layers to ArcGIS Online so that they can be publicly consumed. Many times, users will access our tables in that environment, and they won't be able to really understand what the header columns mean. Here, for example, I have downloaded and joined some spatial data from the Census Bureau in Kent County, Michigan. I'll open up the attribute table and show you a little bit of it. Let me move it over so that I am not in the way. There we go. All right. And so here uh, we have all these different block groups. And then we have our variables at the top of our column, our column headers. P1 underscore something something, P1 underscore something else, P1 underscore something else again. What do these mean? Well, they mean something, right? In the Census Bureau, this particular column means total population for the block group. Well, when we publish this to ArcGIS Online, it will just be as this value, this P1 underscore 001N. But if we update this here, not only can we access the alias that tells us what this is, when we publish it to ArcGIS Online, that alias will persist, and you'll be able to see then what those actual columns mean. So how do we do this? How do we uh, deal with these aliases? Well, by default here, if I click on these three lines, we are showing the field aliases right now. So apparently the field aliases are exactly the same as the variables themselves. When I go up here to table, okay, and I choose fields, then what happens is I'm popped into this new view here of the fields and I can now access and edit my aliases. So here we know that P1 under this alias column okay, for this variable is actually total population. So let me go ahead and say that total population. Okay, and I hit enter. And now what I'll do is I'll close and save this field view. Say yes to changes. And now because my aliases are on, my table should update to say total population. And now it does. It says total population. So if I publish this then to ArcGIS Online, those aliases will persist and my end user will know exactly what that data column means. Of course, we can toggle you know, show on and off so that we can always get back to our variables. So if you update these field aliases in this way, you can really help your end user and yourself know what those fields mean. Well, that concludes my top five tips and tricks for ArcGIS Pro. So if you like this video, go ahead and indicate that and subscribe to this channel for more GIS content. 
And in the comments below, leave your tips and tricks for ArcGIS Pro. Until later, happy GISing. Thanks.